Hello everyone. In today's topic, we are going to see about pasta goods and extruded snack foods. Extruded snack foods are becoming extremely popular due to the attractive shapes and varieties in taste and different flavors. Extrusion is defined as a continuous process of producing a semi-finished food. During the process of extrusion, a polymer melt is pumped on a die and formed into different shapes. These shapes can be a profile, plate, film, tube or any other shapes formed from its cross section. In extrusion, the raw materials are mixed for densifying and plasticizing the material. The homogenized mix is degassed by passing through vacuum mixing section and finally extruded by pressured air to render a primary shaping to the product. Commercially available extruded products include pasta goods, extruded snack foods, breakfast cereals, bakery and confectionery products, beverage products and pet foods as well. Let us discuss about the extruders first. Selection of a suitable extruder is still a challenge in snack foods production for the manufacturer. Nevertheless, there is an increased use of extrusion technology for snack foods production. During food extrusion, different functions occur in a short period of time and they can be summarized as conveying and blending, uniform mixing of all the raw ingredients followed by vacuum mixing, this is followed by preheating or pre-cooling according to the product desires. Then the material is passed for cooking, sterilization and cooking and finally the dye shaping and puffing. The last step is instant drying of the product and for this single screw extruders and twin screw extruders are the two type of extruders available for the production of extruded snack foods. Let us move on to the single screw extruders where the components of a single screw extruder are also termed as segmented screw or barrel screw. The live bin acts as an intermittent storage and conveying of raw materials by the using of sensors for the uninterrupted operation of the extruder. This arrangement prevents the jamming of the ingredients therefore allowing the feed to move to the preconditioner through the feed screw developing internal heat. Thus, the resulting friction induces heating of the snack product. Preheating of the ingredients is done to improve the efficiency and output by addition of live steam. The types of single screw extruders can be a cold form or a pasta type extruder. This type of extruder has a deep flight, smooth barrel and low shear speed. There is no cooking or there is a very little cooking. It is used for all pasta varieties, dough for bakery and confectionery products and other processed foods too. Next comes the high pressure extruders where there is a compression in the screw design of the extruder. Hence, it is used for pre-cooked cereals and snack foods. Next comes the low shear cooking extruders where these machines operate on moderate shear machines possessing high compression barrels with grooves in order to improve the mixing. It is used for semi-moist foods and gritty snacks. The next class of extruders would include the collet extruders where these extruders are operated with high shear and grooved barrels. They are used for mainly expanded snack foods. Next comes the category of high shear cooking extruders. They render an increased shear with interfering flights that are applicable for manufacturing foods for pet animals, ready to eat foods, bakery products, pre-cooked flour, instant food mixes and beverages, crackers and wafers, nutty products and texturized vegetable proteins. The next class of extruders would include the twin screw extruders and nowadays the consumer demand and consumption of pasta with interesting and convoluting designs has tremendously increased. These requirements could be best met only by applying the tin screw extruders due to the limited capabilities of the single screw systems. 
When extruders comprise of two screws of equal sizes inside a barrel, it's termed as a twin screw. The twin screw extruders possesses an intricate design and are highly flexible, providing better control over operation. The twin screw produces a uniform flow of the product and the twin screw can also be classified into two types according to the direction of the screw rotation and to the degree to which the screws intermesh. The counter rotating type twin screw extruders and the core rotating type twin screw extruders. From the above types of twin screw extruders, the core rotating and the intermeshed screw type has found the widest acceptance in the food industry for snack food manufacture. Talking about the advantages of extrusion, extrusion technology provides a number of different advantages over the customary methods of snack products, processing and manufacturing. Some of the advantages include the following aspects like adaptableness where the multiple varieties of products can be produced by altering the ingredients along with the conditions of operation present in the extruder. The extrusion process is well applicable and hence can be accommodating the expectation of the consumer. Next criteria is the product characteristics where an assortment of shapes and other organoleptic factors can be produced by the extruder which cannot be done in any other processing methods. Talking about the energy efficiencies, these type of extruders operate at a relatively low moisture while cooking food products. Hence, low level of redrying is only required in this type of extruders. Economic position about this extrusion method, it has a lower processing cost when compared to the other cooking and forming processes. This type of extruders need less operating space than when compared to any other cooking systems. How does extrusion technology apply for snack food production? This can be well explained when you discuss about the extrusion where it modifies the proteins, starches and other foods thereby producing novel and exclusive snack foods. It also provides a high productivity and automated control process operation for maintaining uniformity in snack foods. The extrusion system consists of HTST that is high temperature and short time heating processes to minimize the degrading of the nutrients therefore enhancing the digestibility of the products. Extrusion cooking method at a high temperature also abolishes the anti-nutritional compounds and detrimental enzymes. Combined unit operations and technologies are adopted by the snack processor to produce distinct snack products. There are many ways to classify snacks as it goes the first generation snacks where this category comprises of all natural products used for snacking like cereal, tuba chips and popcorn. The second generation snacks are the second category where the majority of the snacks made of single ingredient with simple shaped food products like corn, tortilla chips and puffed corn curls that are directly expanded those belonging to this category. The third generation snacks are also called as half products or pellets as this category consists of snacks formed from a combination of multiple ingredients. Therefore, extrusion technology forms a base for manufacturing extruded snack products. There are different types of extruded snacks where the first class belongs to the simply extruded snacks. These snacks indicate a great prospect for development amidst all snack foods. These snacks are produced with great novelty to attract the consumer. Some of the examples are the realistic snacks of three dimensions imitating cartoon characters, flowers, birds or animals. Next variety is the expanded snacks and they are termed as call it or second generation snacks and comprises of the majority of the low calorie snacks produced with different flavor and taste. The final quality of the product depends on the type of raw material, the initial moisture content and the particle size and finally the machine operating conditions. The next type of 
snacks being the fried collex and these are the most accustomed extruded snacks widely popular in the market special shapes could be manufactured by having a special die arrangement resulting in a warped or a puffed shape this product is subjected to frying and given a coating with flavors and colors frying results in a reduction in the moisture from 8 to 1 to 2 percentage raw materials like corn or other cereal grains are used for fried collet production and meticulously packed for moisture retention and shelf life extension the next interesting category of snacks are the baked collets which are expanded and extruded snacks termed as baked collets the vegetable products such as onions potatoes and other tubers corn and other cereals are used to make these type of products proteins fibers cellulose and bran can be blended with cereal grain up to 20% to make a healthy snacks the processing steps include extrusion cooking low pressure forming in order to avoid expansion followed by drying to a final moisture content of 10 percentage resulting in a glassy pellet appropriate packing techniques are adopted to extend the shelf life of the product at room temperature for nearly 1 year proteins and enrichments like chicken meat milk products and pulses may be added from 30 to 35 percentage levels to produce excellent quality products ingredients like oil emulsifiers salt honey soda etc are added at minor levels to maintain uniform moisture migration and finished product quality final product quality highly depends on the drying step in the third generation snack processing maintaining the final moisture content to 12 percentage by drying the product at 70 to 95 degrees centigrade for 1 to 3 hours is crucial owing to this high moisture content the final product has a bulk density and economical in processing domestic preparation of such products is much easier and possesses a longer shelf life since they have less oil content since these products are half cooked they are prepared fresh and sold according to the customer requirements infrared heating hot air or microwaving are the latest techniques applied in the manufacture of these snacks hot air system prevents excess oil absorption by the product thereby rendering a long shelf life to the product hot air expanded products has apparent health benefits owing to an oil free snack that enhances the marketability of these products due to the trend in consuming diet foods among the consumers a combination of raw materials can be blended together to make unique formulations of third generation snacks a high level of starch is mandatory to cause maximum expansion when exposed to hot air or oil even 60% starch levels results in improper expansion yielding a crusty and a hard product making it unfit for consumption with the multi dimensional snacking system a wide range of raw ingredients can be used to blend together to make an excellent formulation for many types of third generation snacks the extruder feed must contain high level of starch to maximize expansion of the collet during exposure to hot oil or air levels of 60% or less starch in the formula gives only a slight expansion in the puffing step and yield the final product with a crunchy hard texture easily available cereal sources like rice wheat corn and other tuberous crops which may be included as starchy ingredients for the manufacturing of these type of snacks the next interesting category of snacks are the co extruded snacks The advent of a novel production technique in the year 1984 resulted in the production of these type of snacks combining two different raw ingredients from two different extruders to be extruded from a single die is the key aspect in this method of production this results in a product with two distinct flavors colors and textures most cereal based snacks that has a central filling is produced in this type of snack there are three basic types of co extruded snacks in the available in the market 
tubing with cereals and fillings with cereals tubing with cereals and fillings with fats and the third one being tubing with cereals and fillings with liquid substances these products have limited shelf life due to moisture migration from the core to the tube or shell let us see about the common ingredients that are used in extruded snacks processing diversified ingredients with different properties are used to produce extruded snack foods currently the advent of latest technologies and automatic equipments have made even complex formulations possible for manufacturing extruded snack foods starch being the major component of any expanded snack food other ingredients included would be of proteinaceous in nature preliminary cooking of the starch renders it more palatable and digestible since raw starch is insoluble and inedible there are many varieties of cereal sources that are available for making extruded snack foods the basic requirement for extruded snacks is expansion or puffing of the products functional cereals can be used but for the degerming process limitations during extrusion occur in high fat food ingredients causing slippage of the dough puffing requires high moisture and increased temperature for puffing of high fat foods preferably starch with 5 to 20% amylose content enhances the expansion as well as improved texture in the resulting snack product the first major raw material that is used in snack foods preparation is corn this cereal based raw material contribute to a major part of the entire extruded snack foods market corn collets and pellets are manufactured from dried and milled corn meal corn chips and corn puffed products are produced from a combination of corn flour meal and grits from dried and milled dent corn in varying particle sizes the type of extruder decides the granular size of the corn and the type of the snack fine granular corn is used for a soft snack manufacturing and coarse granulation is required for a crunchy textured snack the type of extruder is also selected based on the final product and coarse or fine granulation of the degerming corn flour the second major raw material that is used in snack food manufacturing is wheat in snack foods manufacturing flours like wheat flour refined wheat flour are used for the production of baked snacks fried and puffy snacks and wafers etc coarse raw materials like semolina hard wheat flour and other coarse particles like wheat grits meal etc are also used in the manufacture of extruded snacks this is due to their innate quality of possessing high expansion ratio and bulk density they also result in a crunchy texture and taste due to the large starch structure from 20 to 40 microns in comparison to the other cereal starch structures discussing about the important protein that is present in wheat which is gluten and this gluten contributes to the crunchy texture and is responsible for the enhanced nutritive value of wheat based extruded snacks wheat by products such as wheat bran grits and meal are also effectively used along with soya flour or corn flour and other ingredients for enhancing the nutritive value of the product The third major raw material that is used from a cereal origin is rice. Broken rice and rice starch are only used in snack food formulation owing to the high cost of rice. In expanded or puffed rice products, rice contributes to an increased expansion quality than other cereal starch sources. Additional attributes are improved digestibility and taste. when the amylose content is high in the snack formulation complete rice flour formulation results in less oil absorption and much tasty product in formulations having blend of cereal and tubers a distinct flavor is retained with more economical product starch granules are the smallest of sizes between 2 to 8 microns in all grain starches and it digests very easily the functional properties of rice are very different from corn or wheat starches 
Selection of rice starch in the snack food formulation will depend on the amylose content of the common rice varieties. Chips made with 100% rice flour absorb 20-30% to 30 oil lesser than the other cereals during frying. In a formulation where rice and potato blend is used, the potato flavor and texture remain distinctive even though it is mixed with a less costly rice blend. Discussing about the other cereal sources, apart from the above mentioned cereals and other sources such as tuberous vegetables like potato, tapioca, etc. and minor millets like rye, sorghum, triticale are also used as minor ingredients in the formulation for extruded snack food formulation. Discussing about the tuber sources which are the richest sources of carbohydrate that provide energy on consumption. The major tuber crops that are used in extruded snack foods are potato, tapioca in the form of flour, grits, meal, starch extracts and starch powder. Potato in the form of granules, flakes, fine flour or coarse flour and starches are used as ingredient in extruded snack food preparations. The potato used for this purpose is processed to form granules for which the potatoes are diced and tempered to cause enzyme based cell wall softening prior to cooking which is then followed by drying. The natural cell structures of the potato are well retained in the dried granules. Potato is dried and made into flour and this flour is made into a slurry and cooked by hot roller drying with addition of monoglycerides for inhibiting the addition of starch on the dryer. Additional expansion is obtained when potato flour is used in expanded snack foods. Starch cells of potatoes are from larger sizes ranging from 60 to 100 microns which is much larger than the other plant starch structures and contain 20 to 25 percent amylose. Its tendency to develop high viscosities on heating makes it highly applicable to many types of extruded products. In addition, potato flour has tremendous swelling and binding quality causing easy breakdown of the granules resulting in a golden brown color on the fried product. Since it could be cooked in low temperatures, it's a major ingredient in fabricated snacks and directly expanded snack foods. The second largest tuberous vegetable which is used is the tapioca. Cereal based extruded snacks are supplemented with tapioca or cassava that serves as a low calorie food and contributes to the third generation snack food formulations. Cassava is a basic source of low calories or as a supplement to cereal. In general, tapioca starch is used because of the very large shape and size from 5 to 35 microns. The amylose content is about 17% and good quality starch should have a pH of 4.7 to 5.3 and a moisture content of 10 to 13 5% and should be uniformly white in color. Tapioca starches develop very high viscosity and it's an excellent binder with a bland flavor. But tapioca requires moderate cooking temperature during extrusion cooking. Let us summarize whatever we have discussed earlier in this topic. Production of a successful snack is a fine balance between the consumer's needs, likes, tastes and interest and the manufacturer's production abilities, economics and quality control. The raw material cost also plays a vital role in the determination of finished products selling price. Therefore, it is advantageous in using the lowest cost for the raw material to produce a successful snack. Thus, the extruded snack foods play a major role in the market with the advent of latest production techniques in the field of extrusion technology. Thank you.